lift your hands and worship God and declare out of your own mouth, there is no one else like you. There is no one else like you, Father. Father, we come to you this morning in the name of your son, Jesus. Declaring your greatness, declaring your goodness. Declaring that you are God alone. That you're an awesome God, that you're a good father, that you are a wonderful provider. We bless your holy name in this place. We lift you up high, we magnify you, and we make you big. We declare that there is nothing that we long for, nothing that we desire that you don't provide for us, your children. We lift up the name of Jesus, and we declare that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father, and Jesus is Lord in this house. Jesus is Lord in our lives. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come before you today to hear your word. Make it plain today, God. I thank you that every heart is ready to receive your word. Every heart is tender and softened and good ground to receive the seed of your word today. Thank you that the entrance of your word will bring forth light and illumination and will bring forth revelation and in the name of Jesus our lives will never be the same. We'll be the better for it. Now we give you praise and we lift you up and I decrease today God and I allow you to increase in me. None of me and all of you. Thank you that the eyes of our understanding will be in light. We bind the enemy and we bind every distraction in the name of Jesus. We declare that the word will go forth with simplicity, clarity, accuracy, and boldness. In Jesus' name. Now we thank you for those who will be born again, those who will be saved, set free from the power of the enemy as a result of our time in your word. And we covenant with you in advance to give you and you alone all the glory, honor, and praise. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Everybody that agree with me said, Amen. 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 Praise the Lord God. Hallelujah. Well, this is a good day. Amen. Amen. It's a good day. And I am excited about it. My teaching will be a little bit different today, if you'll allow me, okay? Ushers and greeters, I thank you so much for your service. My teaching will be a little different today. Now, I know that usually I get kind of excited that I might, I might go into preach mode. I can't really promise I might not do that today. I'm going to try not to, amen? But the Lord impressed upon my heart when I began to prepare for today's service where we honor our graduates. I want to make it plain. I want to I wanna, uh, do something different today. So I shared with you my notes, shared with you how we'll flow today, because I believe that when we go into a different chapter of our lives, we're closing the last chapter, because our lives are just a book. And we get to write our own story. All of us in here, amen? Our lives are a book, and we get to write our own story. And we get to determine what's in each chapter. Now, in the first few chapters, you don't get to determine what family you're born into. Amen. My brother David says it all the time. He usually says it when somebody's clowning and acting a fool at the cookout. Y'all any, any y'all got some family members that do that at the cookout? But he comes up and he'll follow up and say, you can pick your friends, but you can't pick your family. Amen? Amen. And that's a very true statement. We can pick our friends. 
But you can't pick who you were born to and what you were born into. And so sometimes in the early years of our lives, there are certain things that take place that we have no control over. But then there becomes a time, and I believe our young people that are heading off to college, this is a time where they get to write their own chapter. They get to turn the page, and it's a blank slate. I remember, I'm telling y'all the story, there are some folks I knew when I went to college, and I, went to high, I just so happened to go to high school with those same people. And they were nerds in high school. They get down on the yard, and all of a sudden, they cool in a fan. I'm talking, they walking around like they all of that, and if you go back and look at them in their high school yearbook, or you ask some of their friends, they wasn't all of that at all. But they got to recreate themselves when they went off to college, right? So this is, these are our moments when we're moving into another phase of life. And it's not just for the graduates, it's for some of us. We get to say when we want to turn the page on something and start something fresh. We're not bound by what we used to be or where we came from. So today, I want to flow a little bit different. We're going to talk about roadmap to success. Somebody say that with me. Say roadmap, roadmap to, success. to success. Because everybody wants to be successful. If you don't want to be successful, raise your hand. If you don't want to be successful, lift your hands in the house. That's exactly what I thought. Nobody in here raised their hands because everybody wants to be successful. If we didn't want to be successful, we wouldn't perform and do well in the things that we've done well. And all these young people, they've done well. They've done well. And now they're going to the next phase because they want to be successful. That's just another step in their success to get a college degree. Amen? That's just another step they're taking towards being successful. So today we want to talk about roadmap to success. Now, as I prayed and meditated over this message, the Lord shared with me that there are four S's to success. Now, I know y'all used to me reading the scripture and taking the text. So since y'all used to that, let's go on and do it. Amen? Turn with me to Proverbs chapter 4. That's going to, where, going to be where we springboard from. Proverbs chapter 4. And for those of you who are watching, thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for watching. We pray this word will be a blessing to you as well. Proverbs chapter 4, we're going to read verses 20 through 27. I'm going to read it. If you can follow along with me, I'm going to read it just for the interest of time. It says, my son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let these words not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. What is that? The words, these words that I'm telling you, they are life to you and health to your flesh. Verse 23, keep these words. No, keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of your heart are the issues or the seasons of life. Put away from thee a forward mouth and perverse lips. Put far from thee. Let thine eyes look right on and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of your feet. In other words, consider where you're going. Ponder the path of your feet and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right nor to the left. In other words, don't be distracted. Don't be distracted. Somebody say, don't be distracted. Don't be distracted. Remove your foot from evil. So again, we're talking about a roadmap to success. So let's look, if you look here, we got a nice little graphic for you. All right? But I want you to see 
the four things that the Lord shared with me in order for us to be successful. And this is, again, this is not just about our young people. This is for all of us. In order for us to be successful in life, we got to put first things first. We got to make God's way first. We got to seek God first. So we got to, we have to understand that our relationship with God is the most important relationship that we have. Every other relationship, and if you don't have a relationship with God, there are going to be some times in your life that you may feel lost. There are going to be some times in your life when you may feel like I'm by myself. There are going to be some times in your life where you may feel like, I don't know which way to go. That's the time for you to tap into your relationship with your father, your heavenly father. Now, you may be saying, well, I don't know how to have a relationship. If that's you watching, you may say, I don't know how to have a relationship with God. A lot of folks think that it's real deep. It ain't deep. It ain't deep. And you don't have to try to be like nobody else. That's why they call it a personal relationship with God. Well, I don't pray for 12 hours like Pastor So and so. I don't, I'm a pastor. I don't pray for 12 hours. You understand what I mean? A relationship requires y'all talk back to me. What kind of stuff, if you're talking about a healthy relationship, what do you think it takes to have a healthy relationship? Time, what else? Honesty, what else? I heard somebody else say something. I didn't hear it. Commitment. Patience, yeah. What else do you think it takes to have a good, healthy relationship? Love, respect, what else? That's what you said? Communi look at you. Communication, absolutely. Reciprocation, yes. Comprehension, yes, good communication. I gotta understand what you're saying. You got to talk to me in a way where I can understand where you're coming from. So when you're talking about having a relationship, a good, healthy relationship, it takes all of that time, commitment, patience, love, reciprocation, comprehension. It takes all of that. Well, guess what? In your relationship with the Heavenly Father, what do you think it takes? Same thing. Same exact thing. The only thing God requires for, uh, from us is for us to be transparent, for us to open up to him, for us to let him into our hearts and let him into our lives. That's what he requires. That's all. He just wants to be a part of your life. He doesn't say you have to spend 25 hours with him every single day. If you give him 15 minutes and then increase it maybe to 30 minutes, I can tell you this. Every relationship I know, the more time they spend together, the more they fall in love with each other, right? The more time you hang around somebody, they could not be cute at first. Y'all better talk to me. They couldn't really even all that cute. But the more time you hung around them, and you got to know them, and you got to know their inside, that they're kind, that they're compassionate, that they're thoughtful. Then all of a sudden, somebody that wasn't even really all that cute, they look cute to you now and all. Because they treat you a little different. They deal with you a little different. And now all of a sudden, you think they look good. That's the same way with God. It may not seem attractive in the beginning to have, you, what young person, I mean, let's just be honest, what young person want to go around saying, you know, I'm a Christian. You know, I know God. Ain't no young person doing that. Most of the time, young folks trying to be as incognito or low key as they possibly can. But God just wants a little bit of your time. And then he'll begin to match that. And if you give him a little time, he gives you a little time. Yes. When the more you give to him, and even when you don't give to him what he deserves, he just lavishes his love on you. 
you'll find that he'll start speaking to you. He'll give you some wisdom. He'll give you a way to deal with somebody when you really thought you wanted to put them hands on. You thought you, well, how about go Sydney? You want to, you want to do what? They're going to catch this, they're going to catch this, what you tell me? They're going to catch this thing. <laughs> Sydney, shit, Sydney taught me that. I probably messed it up. It don't sound cool when I say it. But they're going to catch this fame, man. You really want to put some hands on. But the more time we spend with God and develop our relationship, then what happens is he teaches us another way to handle things. Amen? So the first S, if we want to be successful in life, is we got to seek God's ways first. Matthew 6.33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, that's on the back if you want to flip and you follow him along. The first S is first things first. Seek ye first the kingdom and God's way of doing things. And then it says in Matthew 6.33, and all these things will be added to you, right? So that means God ain't got no problem with you having stuff. God ain't got no problems with you having things. God has no problems with you balling as long as you put him first. Amen. God ain't got no problems with you making money as long as you put him first and do it his way. Amen? Amen. Now, if you're following along with me, a couple things I want to lift out right here on the first S. It all starts with our relationship with God. You've got to invite Jesus in. Ask him to be the Lord of your life. Give him permission to direct your, your path. Amen? Amen? And then when we seek God's ways first, everything else falls in line. Does that mean it's not going to be difficult? No, nah, it doesn't mean that. It's still going to be a little difficult because the enemy going to try to come at you. He got to try you. He got to try you to see if you're serious. When you go off to college, that first semester might be like, I don't know what I got myself into. This is a little bit different than high school. In high school, I didn't really have to study. At least that's what I felt. I made good grades in high school, and I, didn't, I had to put in minimal effort. Now, I ain't talking about nobody in here. I'm talking about me. I had to put in this much effort in high school, and I was able to make good grades. When I got to college, and everybody around me was just as smart as me or more. I had to, I had to bring it, bring it. I had to bring my A game because I realized I didn't have a Miss Rosie Johnson who favored me. I didn't have a teacher that was nice to me because I was on the basketball team and we were state champions. I had none of that in all corn. I mean, at Southern Miss. I'm talking to y'all now. I didn't have none of that. Them teachers didn't care nothing about who I was in high school, I had to bring it. So what I had to realize though, when I put God first, then all the other stuff falls in line. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's move to the second S real quick. The second S is surround yourself with good people. Now, I know y'all probably gonna roll your eyes at the top of your head. Some of the young folks, you're gonna really roll your eyes at the top of the head when I say this. You are who you hang around. Y'all ever heard that saying, you are what you eat? Yeah. The same principle holds true. I heard somebody say, show me, I can't remember which motivational speaker it was, but they said, show me your five closest friends and I'll show you your future. Because you can't tell me that you hang around somebody that smokes dope. Was that too much? Y'all got quiet on me, got a little tight. Did I say it too? Did I throw y'all? Okay. You can't hang around nobody that's pulling on it all the time. Amen. Throwing them back all the time. And you want me to believe that you ain't doing none of that? And I no way. There's no way that happens. At some point, you're going to take a sip. At some point, you're going to hit it. You're going to take a hit of the joint. Listen, listen. I know y'all don't want to hear me talk like that, but I'm talking like they talk. Amen. At some point, they don't. You can't hang around fire, as my mama said, and don't get burned. How you expect to hang around fire and don't get burned? So surround 
Well, I'm not saying you can't have fun. No, I'm not saying that at all. I think you should have lots of fun. I think when you go to college, that's your time to enjoy your life. Enjoy your life. But the first rule that I used to tell my girls when they was in second, third grade is before you play hard, you got to do what? Work hard. Work hard. Because if you don't, Work you ain't got no business doing what? Work but if I work hard, I plan to play harder than anybody else. Yeah. When I work all week, my family can tell you, I'm, Friday, I ain't cooking for nobody. We going out to dinner, we gonna do something because I done worked hard. And for me, I wanna play a little bit. So you gotta put first things first. Surround yourself with people that are gonna motivate you. Surround yourself with people who are gonna challenge you. There's a scripture that says in Proverbs that if you hang with wise people, then you're gonna be what? Wise. That's Proverbs 13, 20. But I like the last part of it too. It says if you hang with fools, you're gonna be destroyed. How many folks you know that's to did some time, or maybe has, have gotten shot. Some people maybe have lost their lives. Not because of something that they did, but just because they were hanging around the wrong folk. You hang around people and somebody coming to get them, and you hanging with them, and then they start, the bullets, my daddy used to say, bullets ain't got no name, do it. Well, it's not have no name on it. So you surrounding yourself with folk that ain't going nowhere, ain't doing nothing. They ain't trying to challenge you. They making enemies. There's even a scripture, I didn't know this until I started studying, in Proverbs that says, don't hang around folks with a quick temper. Why is that important? Because you hang around a hothead, they always going to start something and then expect you to have a back. If you started, you out there by yourself, baby. Now, if we together, and somebody come for you, I might go, I might go with you. But if you started, because you a hothead, oh, you gonna get that beat down by yourself. You ain't gonna drag me down. I mean, y'all sitting there looking at me like I'm crazy. I'm not talking to anybody in this house. I feel like I'm being a little too real for y'all this morning. Is that the case? Let me get back to the Bible. Y'all all right? So if we're talking about success, the roadmap to success, you first got to seek the ways of God and his way of doing things. Then you got to surround yourself with good folks. The third thing you got to do is you got to make sound decisions. Now I'm going to tell y'all something. I didn't learn this till later in life. All of us in here, we are a sum total of the decisions and the choices we make. All my grown people said, Amen. 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 It's a couple that we probably wish we could take back, right? <laughs> it's a couple decisions we have made, we wish we could undo those, right? But all of us in here are a sum total of the choices and the decisions that we make. And I told y'all before, as young folks, now when you're younger, you, can, you ain't got no choice of which family you were born to. Some of us had some crazy families that was dysfunctional as all get out. And as a result, it caused us to be looked all off. I raise my hand. <laughs> because of the families we come from, sometimes we're a little thrown off. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen? But we can't use that as an excuse right. all our lives. Right. At some point, you have to say, I can't do anything about where I came from. I can't do anything about what happened to me. I can't do anything about what I experienced. What I can do something about is what I do moving forward. The actions I take from here on out. 
the decisions that I make from here on out. So the third thing you got to know, if you want to be successful, is you got to make sound decisions, and you got to master this. Because making sound decisions has to do with what you're going to do with your body. That means what you're going to put in your body, whether it's liquor, whether it's weed, whether it's good food, healthy stuff, whatever it is, water, drinking sodas all the time. You got to make sound decisions on what you're going to do with your body. You got to even make sound decisions of who you connect with and hook up with. Y'all know what I mean when I say hook up? Please don't make me go into detail about that. Because who you connect with and hook up with, you get all them soul ties and then wonder why I just can't leave so and so alone because you done hooked up with them. Right. Mm -hmm. And we got these soul ties and then wonder why you used to be one way and then you cooked up with so and so and now all of a sudden you just as crazy as so and so. Yeah. So we got to make sound decisions about what we do with our body, where we going to live, what city I'm going to live in. Pastor Cooley used to say this all the time. We don't choose the city we live in based on the money. We choose, the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all our heart. Lean not to our own understanding. In all our ways, acknowledge him and then allow him to do what? Direct our path. He may send us to Texas. He may send us somewhere. But we have to have the mindset, God, wherever you send me, that's where I'm going. Yes. Amen? Amen? Wherever you send me, that's where I'm going. Mm -hmm. And I'm not picking my city based on what city looks cool. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. So we got to make sound decisions, and we got to master this. Mm -hmm. And finally, listen, listen, listen. Let me tell you what God shared with me last night, and I thought, I'm going to say it just like he said it. When we're talking about making sound decisions, we got to make decisions today that we can live with tomorrow. Amen. I'll say it again. We have to, and this is everybody in this room, we have to make decisions today that we can live with tomorrow. Because our decisions for today determines how well we live. Tomorrow. Let me tell you a quick story. I remember when I went to college, I started off majoring in nursing. I chose nursing because my mom and everybody else said nurses make good money and nurses will never be out of a job. Both of those two things are true. Do we need nurses today? Yes. Do they make good money? Yes. A whole load of them. Some, some of them do. But they're always in demand. So I chose nursing. That wasn't the career for me. Then I changed my major to accounting because they said accountants make good money. Do accountants make good money? Yes. Some of them do. Yeah. Most Good profession, good career, right? Yes. That wasn't for me. Then I changed my major to management information systems to be a systems analyst and designer. Yes. Database management, it's computer programming. Yes. Graduated with a degree in management information systems, got the first job as a system specialist, and was absolutely miserable, was I not? This is my boyfriend in college. Pastor Kuhn was my boyfriend in college. I was miserable. Because the only thing I came in contact with every day was a computer. I said, no, I can't do this every day. I ain't got no conversation. Ain't nobody talking to me. This, I missed it. So then I went back to school thinking I was going to get a master's degree in counseling psychology the people denied me the first year because I hadn't even had not one psychology course. How you make it through college with a bachelor's degree and don't even take psychology one-on-one? -on -one? I have no idea how I did that. But I had an 
now one psychology course. So in my effort to prove that I can be a good, successful graduate student in counseling psychology, I quit my job. I would already quit my job, taking a step of faith. They denied me. So I had no other choice but to continue on taking classes in psychology. Proved myself and ended up getting accepted in the master's program the next year. Why am I saying all of that? I was choosing my profession for the wrong reason. Based on the wrong standards. I was choosing my profession based on the money. It was miserable. When I went back in counseling psychology, it was because the Lord directed me to go to school in counseling psychology. And even though I don't practice as a therapist anymore, I can't tell you the countless amount of times in every job I've had since then when I've used that degree. But it was God led. You got to trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and then trust He'll direct your path. Amen? Let's go to the fourth S in our roadmap to, map to success and get out of here. Amen? The fourth S. This is the secret sauce here. The fourth S is you got to stick with the Word. You got to stick with the Word. And our young people may say, but I don't know a lot of it. That's why we gave you devotionals. So you can take it in bite-sized chunks. You don't have to be like this super Christian. You don't have to be like, you know, this so-and-so who's been in church all her life. No, you don't have to be none of that. Take it in bite-sized chunks. That devotional that you're given, and even those of you who are in here watching, uh, listening, and those watching online, get yourself a little devotional book. And every day, Spend time reading something that's going to transform your thinking. Spend time reading something and meditating on the word of God that's going to give you a, a, a time to say, hmm, I never considered it like that. I never looked at it that way. Take it in bite-sized chunks. But whatever you do, if you want to be successful, you got to stick with the word. Joshua 1 and 8 says it like this in the New Living Translation. And we're going to close right here. Joshua 1 and 8 says this. This book of instruction should be studied night and day. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. What you got to understand is this. When we look at, and I'm not saying everybody looks at people like this, but I know some folks who do. When you look at rappers, or musicians, or actors and actresses, and uh, NBA stars, and NFL stars, and people who, you know, I remember watching a show years ago, and I don't even know if they still have this show on television, uh, something about my crib, <coughs> what, what, what is that show? Uh, look at my crib, and, and where the, the, the successful people would show you their house, MTV Cribs, yeah. I remember watching that show, and I remember thinking to myself, whoa, that's nice. Dog, that house looks nice. I want to have one of those one day. Dog, that house is sweet. And then as I got older and started reading some articles, I found out some of them houses wasn't even a crib. They was perpetrating a fraud. They were fronting. They were acting like they had something that they really didn't. They was borrowing somebody else's house to be on TV. Yeah. I remember, folks, some of the musicians used to have uh, pictures that they would take in front of these private jets. Yeah. Like they going private. Every time they go somewhere, they flying private. Yeah. Only to find out that they were renting some of those planes. Yeah. For the video. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And so we're trying to be like somebody that looks successful. Yeah. But they really ain't successful. So we're aspiring to something that ain't even true. Pastor Cooley and I talk about this all the time. The only measure of our success that we should be measuring ourselves on is am I doing what God told me to do? 
Because when you find out, when you put God's ways first, seek him first, when you surround yourself with good folks that's going to motivate you, that's going the same direction you're going, when you make sound decisions and when you make a decision to stick with the word, this is one thing I can promise you. You're going to be successful. Now, am I saying you're going to be a millionaire? No, I'm not. But it doesn't take being a millionaire to be successful. We got this thing mixed up because you got some folks who may be millionaires. They got they make a million dollars, but they spend a spend a million and five. You got some folks who make two hundred thousand dollars, but they spend two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year. That ain't success. You still in debt. I'd rather make whatever I make and have low debt. That way, whenever I want to go somewhere, I can go where I want to go. Amen. Whenever I want to buy something, I can buy whatever I want to buy. Amen. I ain't got to ask nobody for nothing. I ain't got to ask you to borrow nothing. Amen. I ain't got to pay nobody back. Amen. That's real success. Amen. So the Bible says in Joshua 1 and 8, the scripture says, this book of instruction that we have before you, meditate on it. Keep it first. Stick with the word, and it's all in the end. You're going to prosper and have real, real good success. Amen? Amen? Were you blessed by the word? Yes. Can you give God some praise? Don't y'all play with me. Your allies are really blessed. Praise the Lord God. Let me tell you something. I told you I started this message by saying this is not just for the graduates. This message is for all of us. If you take this word and you apply it to your lives, right where you are, wherever you are, whatever stage you are in life. I was reading somewhere uh, last night the scripture that says, I think it's in Proverbs 4 and 23 where it says, keep thy heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. The, the, the passion translation of that scripture says, keep your heart, guard your heart. Guard what you let get into your heart. Don't let fear and doubt get into your heart. Because I can, I can tell you this. For all of y'all, y'all can do whatever y'all want to do. Everybody on this front row is intelligent, you're bright, you're phenomenal, you're unmatched. You are unmatched. And God brought you to this place so that you can go to your next place and prove just how good you are. And guess what? You ain't going by yourself. You go on with him. He's got your front. He's got your back. He's watching all over you. He's got you all around. You got all of these folks in here. Amen? Amen. You got all these folks in here. You got your family. Everybody is rooting for you. Don't be afraid. To tap into these folks for help. Amen. I mean that. Everybody in here, raise your hand if you're willing to help these young folks. Amen. That means if you need $15, you're right down the road. If you need $20, you're right down the road. You want a little home cooked meal? When well, your folks, your, your mama cook, you, you all right. And then I read a little deeper where it says, when we stay connected to God, 
when we stick with the word, we get to determine what season we're in. We can have a perpetual spring season if we want to. Because of what's in us. Amen? Stand on your feet. Let's give God some praise. Please don't pay the cake him when you give him some real praise. Father, we thank you. We give your name praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. We lift you up in this house. We declare that there's nobody like you, and you are our all in all. Yes. Because it's in you we live, we breathe, and have our very being. We would be absolutely nothing without you. And I pray that you will give everyone in here a revelation of how much you love them, how much you're for them, and that you're always with them. You'll never leave them nor forsake them. In Jesus' name. Now, if you're watching, I'm going to turn this over to Pastor Cooley to do the altar call. Amen. If you're watching online, and you want to give your heart, give your life to Jesus, today's a good day to do it. Amen? Amen. He's waiting. He's willing. He sent Jesus to die just for you. Amen? If you're in the sanctuary, you want to give your life to the Lord. You got this opportunity. So you may be seated. We're going to lead you in a prayer. Those who are watching, we're going to lead you in a prayer to give your life to Jesus. Those of you who are in the building, would you bow your heads with me? Every head bowed, every eye closed. Those of you online, this is Pastor Cooley. He's going to lead us in the prayer of salvation. Amen? Amen. You may be in here today. You may be watching online. You may say, I've never asked Jesus Christ to be my personal Lord and Savior. I've been baptized in water, but being baptized in water doesn't mean that you're born again. You get baptized in water as a result of being born again. But sometimes I know like I did. We put the cart before the horse. I got baptized in water and then I received Jesus later. But it's very, very simple in how you receive Jesus. Romans 10, verse 8, 9, 10, and 13 said, If you will confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart men believe unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So simply, you speak words out of your mouth and say that you take Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and say you believe in your heart. Not in the thing that pumps blood, but in your spirit. That God raised Jesus from the dead. And the Bible says you shall be saved. Every man in here, every woman, boy, girl, in here and online, you're going to have to stand before God for yourself. Yes. And so you're going to have to make a decision. Have I asked Jesus? Have I made Jesus Christ my personal Lord and Savior? You can do that today. It's very simple. So with head bows and eyes closed in prayer, let's everyone want to lift one hand towards heaven and repeat this prayer from your heart and mean it. And if you mean it, Jesus comes in today. Say, Father, Father in, the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I admit, I admit that, I sinner, that I am a sinner and I need a Savior. Need a savior. The, only savior the only Savior for me, for me is, Jesus Christ. is Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. come into my heart and save me. me. I believe that you came to earth. I believe that you died. And I believe that you rose again. I believe that you took my punishment so that I can receive forgiveness. So on today, I receive Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name, In Jesus name. I, am saved, I am saved, and I'm not ashamed of it. I'm, of it. I'm, glad, about I'm glad about it. In Jesus' name, In Jesus name. Amen. amen. Glory to God. Come on, put those hands together. If you just prayed that prayer in the building for your very first time, or and if you uh, prayed online for your very first time, you can send us a text to 601 618 8909. 618 601 618 8909. You can send us a text. 
with your email address, we can send this to you by PDF, or if you send us your mailing address, we can mail this book to you free and post this page. Again, by send us, simply sending us a text to 601-618-8909. Again, that's 601-618-8909. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And if you want to complete the service with your giving today, you can do so those of you online by texting our text to give to 601-368-8909. 601-368-8909. Send a text to that. That's text the word give, G-I-V-E, to 601-368-8909. And once you send the text, glory be to God. Amen. Just follow the directions. It's free and it is safe and it is simple. You can also give by giving by Cash App. That's Cash App. That's Dollar Sign New Come and See Church. Cash App Dollar Sign New Come and See Church. We thank you so much for your giving. All gifts to this to this ministry are tax deductible and will be used for the purpose for which we say it will be used. Amen. Amen. So we want to thank those of you for watching today. We hope that you were blessed. If you were blessed by this word, why don't you like it and share it with someone else? Let's clap it up for our, our internet audience.